Welcome to night two of Resurrection Week Live, where we're spending the whole week focusing on the theme of grace in preparation for this weekend, where we remember the death of Christ and really the victory that Christ had over sin and death. And so tonight, to kick us off, Tim Plaster and his family are going to lead us in a few worship songs.
until I met you. And I was breathing, but not alive. In all my failures, I tried to hide. It was my tomb until I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. My daughter, Ebony, is officially a year and a half, and she is in an incredibly fun stage. I can think back to when she was smaller and would just sit in this boppy on the floor and swing at the, the jungle gym that we placed in front of her and to, to see all of the progress that she has made. She does this thing now where she puts her hands on her hips and she walks around the house with, with all this sass and this attitude. And it's so fun to watch her just learn language, to, to watch her interact with the world. I mean, my wife, Mackenzie, and I were really, we're watching her transform right in front of us. And it's an incredible joy. Now, as you look across the, the landscape of the entire Bible, the theme of transformation is all over the place. I mean, even in Ezekiel chapter 36, God says, I'm going to remove their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. There's going to be a fundamental transformation that takes place in the gospel. And even Paul in Romans chapter 12, he picks up on that language. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Jesus himself in John chapter three, he says, what must I do to be saved? How, how does he answer that question? He says, you must be born again. There's got to be a transformation. And again, Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, anyone who is in Christ, he is a new creation. Transformation is all over 
the scriptures. And we, and we might say it this way. God is in the business of transformation. And the vehicle that he chooses to use, uh, to use in order to help us in that transformation process is grace. God is in the, the, the transformation business, and he uses the vehicle of grace to make it happen in our lives. In fact, that's what Paul says in our text this evening in Titus, Titus chapter 2. Let me just read you this verse beginning in verse 11, Titus 2, 11. Paul says, for the grace of God has appeared. Now, now we often think of grace as, you know, an abstract concept. We define it as unmerited favor, and that certainly is true. There's this reality in which God's grace is his kindness and his favor displayed towards us, but, but how did he practically choose to do that? Well, Paul's answering that question in Titus 2, 11. He's saying, for the grace of God has appeared, and it's appeared most especially in the person and work of Jesus Christ. You see, Hebrews chapter one says, Christ Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God. He's the exact imprint of his nature. And even the apostle John in John chapter one says, he is the light in the life of men. He is full of grace and truth. And so what Paul really is saying here is for the grace of God in Christ Jesus has appeared. And what does Jesus do? Why did he appear? Well, it says he goes on bringing salvation for all people. As we begin this evening, looking at this text in Titus chapter two, I, I want you to ask the question, how do we experience transformation? How did God intend for us to be transformed by his grace? Well, Paul answers that question very clearly in this text. It's through the person of Jesus. And so if you're listening to this, I want you to trust in Jesus as the only source of true and lasting transformation. And that's point number one for us this evening. As we think about how it is that God can transform us, how it is that God can take people who are far from him in their rebellion and in their sin and make them children of God, he does it in and through Jesus Christ. And so for you this evening, if you desire transformation, trust, look to Jesus. He is the only means by which we can have true and lasting transformation. He is the grace of God that came to this earth. We understand that the gospel message makes it very clear that Christ came for a very specific reason. God demonstrated his grace and his love for us in sending his son to to take care of the problem of our sinfulness. In fact, that's what the Apostle John in 1 John says. He became the propitiation for our sin. That's the payment. The cost of our sinfulness was paid by Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's a clear demonstration of the grace of God working through Jesus Christ. And so how do we respond to this message? How do we respond to the truths of Christ Jesus being the grace of God given to us for this transformation? Well, the Bible really gives us two very specific words. Jesus himself says them again and again throughout the gospels. It's simply first, we must repent we must understand our sinful condition before a holy God. And that's the starting place for true transformation. It's understanding that, as Paul says in Romans 5, we were enemies with God. Our, our sin was active. We were in rebellion against God. And our sin, as Isaiah says, created a separation between us and our God. But what God did for us is that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And within the gospel, Christ commands us, commands you this evening to repent of your sins, to turn from the darkness of this world and to look to Jesus. Look to Jesus, the grace of God in and through Jesus Christ. That's the first word. We got to repent of our sins. But Jesus also tells us we have to believe. We have to have faith that Jesus is who he says he is, that he did what he said he did, and that it means what he says it meant. We got to believe even the words of Paul that the grace of God has appeared in the person of Jesus Christ, and with him, he brought salvation to all people. 
And so before we even continue in this conversation of transformation, you need to understand that Jesus and Jesus alone provides transformation. That is the means by which God utilized his grace in the person of Christ to transform broken and rebellious people. And our responsibility as the creatures that God has created is to repent, turn from our sins, and to place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And so in that sense, we can say there's a fixed point in time which we are transformed. That's what the gospel says. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We become born again. We become new creations. But for those of you who are listening, who have already taken those steps of obedience, who have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, there is another aspect of transformation in this text. Let's look at it together in verse 12. So it says, the grace of God has appeared in Jesus Christ, bringing salvation for all people. And what does it continue to do after salvation? Well, it trains us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. Now, we understand the grace of God. Certainly, it is what saves us and transforms us in a fixed point in time. That's when we become new creations. But as Christians, we also understand we are not only able to say, I have been transformed. We also should be able to say, I am being transformed by the grace of God. Of God. And that's the second thing that we learn in this text. And the second thing that I want you to do as a response to this text is to cling to Jesus. As we think about being transformed in an ongoing way, cling to Jesus for ongoing transformation. We understand that we live in a world that is marked with darkness and sin. We live in a world where we are supposed to be salt and light. And so grace, the the grace that God has given us in Christ Jesus, what's it supposed to do? It's supposed to train us, to equip us, to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age. Yeah, you might think about it this way. Grace is the tool that God uses under the hood of our hearts to continue to transform us in an ongoing way. And so if you're a Christian this evening and you desire to continue to live a godly and upright life, you must cling to Jesus. Jesus has the means and the power by the grace of God to help you continue to be transformed, to be continuously becoming more like Christ. That's what Paul teaches us. And even in verse 14, it's talking about Christ. He gave himself up for us to redeem us from all lawlessness. And John clarifies that. He says, sin is lawlessness. So the grace of God in Christ Jesus came to redeem us from sin, from lawlessness. We are no longer bound by sin. We have the freedom and the power to say no to sin. And that's what he says as he goes on to purify for himself, a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works, who are being transformed by the tool of God's grace as he opens up the hood of our hearts and continues to work on us and sanctify us, we must cling to Jesus. Yes, we can say, I have been transformed, but we should also be able to say, I am being transformed by the grace of God in and through the person of Jesus Christ. Now, we all understand living in a fallen world, this process is difficult. It's a difficult journey that is not without its trials and temptations, but God in his grace did not leave us to our own devices. In fact, he gives us a hope that is meant to be a strength that continues to help us move forward in this transformation process. In fact, that's what Paul says in 2 Timothy 2, right? Be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus in an ongoing way as we cling to Christ, as we look to him for transformation. Point number three this evening is to anticipate the return of Jesus to complete your transformation. So now we have these three aspects of transformation. As a believer, we should be able to say, I have been transformed. We should be able to say, I am being transformed, but we should also be able to say, I'm looking forward to the day where I will be finally once and for all completely transformed. That's what we see in this text. That's verse 13. As we pursue this life, he says, waiting for our blessed 
hope. This reality that's in the future, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we think about our Savior returning, that should give us an unwavering, anchored hope to keep moving forward, to keep clinging to Christ, to keep looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, because one day, as John says in 1 John 3, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. And on that day, there will be no more sorrow. There's going to be no more sin struggles. There's, no going, to be, there's going to be no more working out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's going to be complete. We will be once and for all transformed by the grace of God working in and through Jesus Christ. And that reality in the future is meant to pull us right now in the present. And I want you this evening to be able to say along with me, I have been transformed. There's been a time when I've repented of my sin, placed my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and I have been transformed by the gospel. But I also want you to be able to say that you cling to Jesus, to continue in an ongoing way to be transformed by grace, by the tool that God uses under the hoods of our hearts to continue that process and transformation and to do that with endurance and hope because one day we understand that Jesus will return. He's going to right every wrong. He's going to bring us into glory and he's going to transform us once and for all to the praise of his glorious grace. And so that's my encouragement for you this evening. I want you to be able to say, I have been transformed, I'm being transformed, and by God's grace, one day I will ultimately be completely transformed in eternity with God in eternal joy. That's my prayer for you. So let me pray for us now, and then we're going to continue singing some songs as we wrap up this evening. Father, we're so grateful for the grace that you have given us in your Son, and Father, I pray for anyone that is watching this video right now, that if they don't know you, Father, by your grace, would you open their eyes to the truthfulness of the gospel? Would they be able to say with me and every other saint across the world right now that I have been transformed by Jesus? And Father, for those who are here or listening to this, that are transformed, that are sons or daughters of you, Father, I pray that they would cling to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of their faith, and that they would experience uh, this transforming reality in an ongoing way as they become more like Christ. And Father, would you instill a hope in their heart as we await the return of our Savior to transform us once and for all? That is our blessed hope. And Father, may we be motivated by that reality. And as we sing right now, would we sing out of a heart of joy because of the grace that you have given us in Christ Jesus? I pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, the grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpour, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilt. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon. that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. You who are longing to see His face, will you this moment His grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, the grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, the grace that is greater than all our sin.
Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus rose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested in my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested, my life began. When death was arrested, my life began. That's when death was arrested, my life began. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Resurrection Week Live. Just as a reminder, we're going to continue going live every night this week leading up to our Good Friday service. That's going to be 730 at Heritage Middle School. We'd love for you to join us there. And then on Saturday, again, as a reminder, we've got our kids outreach event extravaganza from 11 to 1 also at Heritage Middle School. We'd love you also to join for one of our three Easter services, 8 a.m., 945 or 1130 this coming Sunday. Well, we hope to see you again tomorrow night for the next Resurrection Week Live.